Hello everyone, Luke here, and I was just admiring this beautiful game art, and we have Super Mario 3D World, we have LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, we, we have Super Mario Galaxy, all this art is just so beautiful, but have you ever noticed this letter right here in the bottom left corner? What does it mean? Well, today we're going to figure that out. The ESRB, they made us play Minecraft instead of Grand Theft Auto, so, you know, blame them. Now, video games have always been a controversial piece of media for being too violent. With something like a violent movie, you're watching a killer. With something like a violent video game, you are the killer. Now, back in the day, video games never used to have age ratings. But back in the days before the NES, you really didn't need an age rating. The games had like 100 pixels total. Nothing shown on the NES or any arcade games was considered really too violent. But it was clear that that's where it was headed. Video games were getting more and more realistic with each generation. The NES had some games like Duck Hunt where you shoot ducks, and don't even get me started on fighting games. Those were probably the most controversial. Violent games were getting more and more realistic. Some games were just meant to be played by older people, but how were kids and especially parents supposed to know that? The next generation of systems is what it all built up to. While the Super Nintendo was meant to be more family friendly with this library, the Genesis was meant to be the more kind of hardcore system with more fighting games. Two games are responsible for the game rating we have today, both coincidentally on the Genesis. One of the games being Mortal Kombat. With looking at the footage, it's pretty easy to see why. Fighting, blood, ripping people's heads off, fighting games have always been somewhat controversial, but I think this was the tipping point, because this just looks pretty realistic. And just the thought that these games were only going to look better and better. And the second game was Night Trap. It was an interactive movie, the storyline being you're a secret agent that needs to protect a group of girls from like ninja people, you do this by trapping the ninjas, that's the game's whole mechanic, but there are a lot of these guys and it's easy to miss one or two. This game had a ton of controversy for a ton of controversial scenes. But the scene that got the most heat out of all of them was the bathroom scene, and honestly I don't really know what I'm looking at here, but I don't like it. A lot of moms bought their kids games like this without even realizing it. I mean, there really wasn't much you could do. I mean, you couldn't just look on your phone to see if a game was too violent or not. Something needed to change, which started one of the most influential lawsuits in video game history. December 9th, 1993 was the day a congressional hearing was held discussing violent video games and a potential way to stop the issue. There was a representative for both Nintendo and Sega. Nintendo was against the violent video games, and Sega was all for them. However, Sega didn't go home happy that day. Nintendo had everybody on their side, even higher government officials. It was clear that some sort of age rating system needed to be implemented. Not necessarily the censor games, just letting people who bought the games know what they're getting into. And that's how the ESRB was made. ESRB stands for Entertainment Software Rating Board, and they do exactly that. Every video game company sends in footage of their game, and the ESRB gives an age rating. So what are the age ratings, and what do they mean? In total, there are seven age ratings, all with different meanings. EC stands for Early Childhood, and it's the first rating here. They are mostly learning games. This is a rare rating, only 268 games ever holding the title. On March 1st, 2018, the EC rating was taken out due to the fact that it was never really used much to begin with. Now, any games like this are just E rated. E stands for everybody. Now, originally on early Nintendo 64 and PS1 games, they were actually K through A games, which stood for kids through adults. It was later changed to E, but they mean the same thing. Next, we have E10 and up. This is made for people 10 and up. It first came out with the game Donkey Kong Jungle Beat in 2004. E10 and up games may have mild language or slight violence, but overall they're not bad. After that is T, standing for teen. This rating's for people 13 and up. Games with this rating may contain violence, suggestive themes, crude humor, minimal blood, simulated gambling, and or infrequent use of strong language. This is a bit of a step up, but it's not as bad as our next rating. M, standing for mature. This rating's for people 17 and up. Now, M games may in have intense violence, blood and gore, sexual content, and or strong language. An M rating is the highest rating you can get on a Nintendo, Xbox, or PlayStation system, but we can still go up from here. AO, standing for adults only. Only 26 games have ever gotten this rating. Being the rarest rating a game can get, these games are pretty much, pretty much just porn. Game stores like GameStop will refuse to sell AO games altogether, and like I mentioned previously, you can't get them on any console. You can only buy them for a PC, so a lot of times when a game gets the AO rating, the game developers will have to go back in and take some things out or censor stuff to make it an M rated game so they can actually sell it and make some money. And there's one more rating, RP. It stands for Rating Pending. You will usually see this for game announcement trailers. It's usually just a placeholder before the game gets assigned a true rating. And that is the ESRB, and that's what they do. They make sure that gamers and parents can see how violent a video game is before buying it. 
And now with smartphones, it makes it even easier than ever to see a game's contents. So that means that the problem is solved and video games should never have any controversy ever again. Well, apparently it didn't solve anything because parents are still complaining to video game developers that their video games are too violent. Like, you bought the game. Look in the bottom left corner. The problem isn't on the video game developers. The problem is on you. Parents shouldn't just buy any video game that their children wants and then get mad if it's too violent. It should be up to the parent to take responsibility, but nope. People still pretend like the ESRB doesn't exist. We still see news stories on our video games being too violent for our youth. They're not meant to be played by our youth. This problem is all on the parents for not monitoring what they're buying instead of just blaming the video games as a whole. But does that get brought up on national news nowadays? No, they're just mad that some mom bought their kid an M-rated game and then they got mad and blamed the developer instead of taking responsibility like an actual adult. In conclusion, the ESRB was a very important part of gaming, and it's something we probably needed from the start. But now that we have it, people are even madder about video games being too violent. I mean, what do you all think? But as always, thanks for watching.